You are listening to the Think Brick Australia podcast. Think Brick Australia represents the clay, brick and paver manufacturers of Australia. Brick by Brick, our podcast will discuss technical information and architectural case studies with special guests. I'm your host, Elizabeth McIntyre, the CEO of Think Brick Australia. On today's podcast, I am delighted to welcome Matthew Ching. He's been part of our technical team now for possibly nearly a year or more. I would think just about 11 months, yeah. Yeah, and we were talking just before we started about Matthew's family using bricks as stepping stones, and I think we'll say for some creative landscaping in the backyard. Yeah, let's just say that. It's it's a little bit more complex, but we'll keep it at that. We'll yeah. keep it at that. On today's podcast, we're actually talking about tuck pointing and repointing. And so, Matthew, before we start, and I know you've spent a lot of time studying this both theoretically and in real life, could you just talk to us about actually what tuck pointing is? So tuck pointing is essentially a restorative brickwork process, which includes replacing the mortar of a older brick wall with new mortar. And it's more complex than that for tuck pointing, where the aesthetics of the brick wall is to be maintained. And so what people typically want to do is they want to apply a very thin line of white mortar just to imitate that previous original look. And we get a lot of inquiries about this because obviously we get inquiries about people trying to match their brickwork, particularly in in older houses. But as also I like to say to people who are worried about the bricks is that the bricks themselves are going to be fine. It's normally the mortar that crumbles first and this is the exact issue that we're talking about now. And I was looking at the history of this just before we came on and it was actually developed in England, which is no surprises there, in the 18th century to, I guess, imitate rubbed brickworks. And and those were sort of bricks that were hand cut to a precise size to allow for thinner joints. But maybe if you could just describe the method of what you need to do, Matthew, for tuck pointing. Yeah, absolutely. Just a brief summary. Well, first of all, you need to take out the pre-existing mortar. And this will be the mortar that's typically damaged or sort of eroded away. I and mean, it's not, doesn't really look good on the wall anymore. So you first, first of all, you'll just want to take that out. Secondly, you'd want to brush the debris away from these joints just to clear them out so there's no inconsistencies when you're putting the new mortar in. So the next step would be repointing, and that's just basically putting back in the mortar just to ensure the structural integrity of the wall. Then you're going to have to acid wash it just to clean away that excess mortar. And then lastly, you would want to put a thin line of contrasting mortar on top of the repointed mortar. And this will give the brickwork a brand new um, refurbished look. So Matthew, what you're saying is the repointing is putting the mortar back in and really having sort of a thick line of mortar. And then the repointing is making that line really thin and really schmick and really giving that whole wall a gorgeous facelift. That's exactly correct. Right. And look, you can do this if you're a do-it-yourselfer at home, but I will say it is quite a timely process. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also quite artisan in its technique. You really have to nail those thin lines and if you get them more crooked, it really doesn't look that good and and it clearly shows. The contrast is there. Look, we've seen both the professionals attempt this and the amateurs and I would say go with the professionals. Matthew, when we're thinking about the mortar that we're using for both repointing and tuck pointing, what do we need to consider on that? Yeah, so we need to consider the colour of the mortar that you're repointing. And the reason because of that is the white lines that we're going to be using in the tuck pointing process is going to be acting as the mortar joint. And so we want everything behind that to be of the same shade. And this sort of gives that line, that extra boldness and that contrast to imitate the mortar joint. It really makes it pulp. And if we're looking at bricks probably lasting about 100 years, how long does tuck pointing last? So tuck pointing lasts for about 20, maybe to 30 years. I would consider it a long-term restorative process. 
and done properly and done well, it should last you almost consistently up to that 20, 20 year mark. Longer. Well, there's plenty of places of brick houses that are still standing after 80 years where the mortar actually is perfectly fine. Yeah, that's right. I was actually taking a walk by the rocks in Sydney and those terraces all tuck pointed and they all look marvelous with their, it almost looks like they're bringing history back to life. And obviously these houses are quite old, but with that new tuck pointed mortar man they just look that much better are there any instances where tuck pointing is not suitable so tuck pointing won't be recommended for severely cracked brickwork just because this process is largely aesthetic and for situations where the structural integrity of the wall has deteriorated this is going to require a structural engineer yeah, and we, uh, ra- rather than a cosmetic fix, yeah. That's right. If it, if there's some underlying structural issues, they're not going to be fixed yeah, with exactly. tuck point. So, Matthew, let me see whether I've got this takeout correct. The first thing that we know is that bricks last a long time. In a wall, as we know, they can last between 80 to 100 years. But there is a chance that the mortar will go over that time. So what we can do is that we can repoint the mortar, which means taking out all of that old mortar and replacing it with brand new mortar. If we really want to make that mortar pop, we can do something called tuck pointing, which is a very thin white line on top of that original repointed mortar, which gives the wall a a really definitive look, a beautiful facelift and makes it look aesthetically brand new. Have I got those things right? That's exactly correct. And then we did talk about whether you can do it yourself and I'm not sure whether people or listeners out there have partners like mine, but my concern would be if we started this project is it's very long and quite intensive and you may end up with mortarless walls for a couple of weeks and I don't think anyone wants that. Yeah, that's right. And if you want to avoid this, it would be better if you consulted with a professional professional. Again, tuck pointing is a very artisan craft and it's something that requires a lot of attention to detail. And just a reminder, if there's major cracks or crumbling in your wall, it's best to find a structural engineer to help you out. Tuck pointing is a refurbishment process and it's not a structural repair. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us to talk about repointing and tuck pointing today. Thank you for having me. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please follow, rate and review our podcast. We are always looking for new ways to think brick. If you have an idea of what you'd like to hear about, there's a link in our show notes to let us know.